Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Jim Fitzpatrick. Hi, everyone. Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of The Small Business Show right here at ASBN.com. 43% of cyber attacks target small businesses, so it's important to know how to protect your business before that happens. On today's show, we're joined by Chris Knowles, the founder and CEO of Beyond Computer Solutions, to discuss cybersecurity and how business owners can protect themselves from these kinds of attacks. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me, Jim. Sure. So many, you know, 43%, that's a staggering number. A lot of people that are listening to us have this discussion today think, wow, we thought that uh, cyber attacks only happen to companies like Target and Walmart and others where the, you know, the money is really big. But in reality, 43% is an eye opener, right? It really is. It's shocking to most small business owners that I speak to every day. Sure. Yeah, no question about it. So what, what are the main factors contributing to small businesses being attacked? Well, if, if you're asking what the reasons are, why do they go after a smaller company where obviously they have less money than a larger company? It's because the smaller companies don't necessarily invest in the training and in the tools mm -hmm. to help prevent cyber attacks. So they end up okay. being lower hanging fruit. Okay. So they're much more vulnerable to these types much of things. Much more vulnerable, exactly. Yeah. And, and therefore easier, right? Absolutely. They don't even have to hack their way in if they can trick somebody into letting them in. <laughs> so walk me through that. What do you mean by that? I know people are going to say, what do you mean people letting you in? Yeah. Uh, when I say that, people always raise an eyebrow, like, who's letting them in, right? Right, so, right. You know, we're spending billions of dollars on technology to prevent cyber attacks. But what we're not doing a good job of is making sure that the employees who check email every day are trained on how to recognize, say, a phishing email or an email sure. that can trick someone into to letting them in. So that's kind of where the, the vulnerability lies with small business. That's right. The boy, there's no question about it. I own, a, I own a number of small businesses, and I cannot remember the last time that we had training you know, for this type of a topic. You can be sure that after this uh, interview today, we're going to be checking into that. So thank you for that reminder. But uh, So what steps can business owners take to protect themselves from these attackers? You know, the most important thing is training. It, it really is. And it's not hard to find. In fact, we actually have a free training program that mm -hmm. I'm willing to give anybody a link for that will take their employees through. It takes about 45 minutes. You do it online okay. Okay. and uh, there's a quiz at the end and then they can pr pr you know, print this certificate of successful completion. But where I'm going with this is that a trained user is kind of like having a human firewall mm -hmm. or a security guard that's you know able to recognize danger before it enters the building. Sure. So um, that's why it's so important to have the training. There's, there's other things we can talk about, but certainly a trained user is the most important thing. Okay, that's great. And uh, what what's the impact that an attack has on a small business? Oh, it can be completely devastating. So my team, we are trained incident responders, mm -hmm. and we have literally gone in and had to help a company restore operations after spending over a million dollars just because one email had one link that one person who wasn't trained on clicked on. Oh, that's how devastating it can be. Wow. Wow, that that is incredible. And when you think in terms of this, uh, are you talking about the, the the capability for these attackers to clean out your bank account, uh, you know, your business bank account, or to get into all of your clients' personal information, or change orders, or what are what what does a, a a typical situation look like? Yeah, that's a great question because there's actually about two or three common ways that cyber attackers behave. Mm -hmm. uh, one is they try to get you to go to a website that can cause you to you know, download something that would encrypt everything on your hard drive and encrypt everybody else in your organization's hard drive and then have to pay a ransom in cryptocurrency, yeah. sometimes, you know, $100,000 or more at this point, just sure. to get your data back, right? Oh That's gosh. one type. Um, the other type is we, we work a lot with real estate law firms and title companies. Mm -hmm. And so home buyers a lot of times are getting told at the last minute to send a money wire somewhere yes. else. And th th these people are pretending to be the law firm or the banks. And so that's another way people are losing money. And then finally, this isn't the, the last or least, there's other ways, but th this is the last of the common ones we hear about a lot is people get in and they figure out who's who and they want the personal health information or financial information for certain individuals. And they wow. threaten to leak that information if ransoms aren't paid, putting not only the company at risk, but their reputation and their clients and or patients at risk as well. Wow, that's that's so true. And boy, if that hits the press, 
that you've got either a law firm or you've got a healthcare uh, facility or what have you, uh, where you know it, it sounds like there's a breach that took place of that of that information. Uh, that that alone can put you out of business, right? People are going to stay away from you. It certainly can, and sadly, so many business owners don't even know that they're at risk. They think right. either they're too small. They yeah. have an IT company that is doing traditional antivirus and firewalls, and they just don't know what they don't know. They don't realize that maybe their their current IT company is not up on these latest threats, and mm -hmm. you know they're not doing the training or the, the next generation tools. Yeah, for sure. What's the average cost to assist after an attack? Well, just in legal fees alone, it can cost about six hundred thousand dollars, and even if you have cyber insurance, which is very popular now, mm -hmm. it doesn't cover the person who may have clicked something to cause the attack. In other words, it may cover you if somebody, you know, got hacked, but that's sure. very rare. It's more likely somebody let someone in. And if they, if they find out that an employee allowed an attacker to get in, right. And money was wired somewhere. You're not getting that back. And so wow. just our fees alone, our average incident response cost spending weeks on site, rebuilding infrastructure or negotiating with ransomware attackers, that could be another half a million dollars. In the meantime, the business is down for probably yeah. two weeks. They, you know, they lose their reputation. And in six months, about half of those companies actually go out of business. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of small businesses just can't weather that kind of a storm, right? That's right. It's very yeah. expensive. Yeah, there's no question about it. And, um, and, and in, the, in, in these cases, uh, these, these attackers, they don't stop. I mean, I've had some of my friends that own companies and said they, they came back uh, a second and third time. They do. You get on a short list of somebody who paid a ransom, and yeah. then they, you know, these these attackers they network with people just like we as business owners network with mm -hmm. other people, and they say, "Hey, somebody here paid me, you know, hundred grand for um, a decryptor to get the data back. Hit them again, right? Because it's not usually the same threat actor group. It's someone else that they referred, and then they split the money, and they're okay. always, you know, morphing and shifting so they don't get found. Wow, it's, it's incredible. Scary. And these are typically all offshore uh, entities, right, that are that are doing this? Yes. In fact, I've never been able to identify that one was actually stateside. Mm. Most all of them occur in other countries, and yeah. you're not going to really be able to prosecute them. Right, right. So it's it's uh, they're doing this this crime and and uh, not without the threat of any doing any time or or paying any penalties for sure. So they just keep going. Um, so talk talk to us about you know the, when when a business owner calls you and they may call you now after this interview that we're we're having here today. Um, what do they say to you? Do they say, hey, what you know, get, come on into my company and do a full audit. Let me know where I'm at. How can you protect me? Because this is a very important issue here. So what what how, talk to me about how that how that looks? Sure. So a concerned business owner will usually reach out and ask us to do a full assessment. So. Okay. so we have three different layers that we that we provide. It's assess, address, mm -hmm. and maintain. So the okay. first step is an assessment, which I recommend. We can either check, you know, what the current IT is doing or not doing, and either give mm -hmm. you a thumbs up or thumbs down and identify gaps. Okay. Or if you don't have an IT company, it's even more important that you talk to somebody like us, you know, to make sure that uh, you get get on board because you need certain layers of security, not just training. It's it's a layered approach. Sure. Once we've assessed the environment addressed any any gaps we simply maintain so mm -hmm. kind of like an insurance policy you're just paying to make sure that if you know you've got everything in place yeah if sure. something were to happen nothing's 100 percent, nothing's bulletproof but we're going to reduce right. your your risks significantly right and then your a company like yours is on call if in the event something does happen you're familiar with the system you're familiar with the employees and such so i would imagine that saves some time and energy as well right because you can jump right in Absolutely. So, you know, if we're yeah. doing what we call our managed detection and response, mm -hmm. we're managing and detecting any particular alarms that go off on our end. But mm -hmm. should an incident occur, we're on retainer and mm -hmm. we've got a team ready to, to, to fight back. And sure. the good thing is with our tools in place, we can certainly stop the attack from being as severe or possibly stop it entirely without anything happening. Okay. And if I'm a company that has maybe eight or 10 employees and we do around a million dollars in top line revenue every year, what does a service like yours cost? Just a range. Yeah. Now, that's a great question. That's actually a, a range that we deal with quite a bit in mm -hmm. terms of client size. 
Okay. You're going to be looking anywhere between, you know, $1,000 to $2,000 a month on right. a monthly recurring basis. But that includes not only the security, but help desk, making sure your systems are up to date, okay. any kind of subscription services. So we're a full service IT shop with okay. a cybersecurity arm. Um, ah, we don't okay. do just one or the other. So Okay. Okay. And I think a lot of your clients that call you that are in trouble thought they were protected, right? And oh, like, yes. how could this happen? How come my IT guy or my company or what have you that I do business with didn't protect me against this? When in reality, it's a specialty type item that isn't included in every computer or it's not complete. It's also not included in everybody's services out there. It's a very specific item, right? It is very specific. You know, we've dealt with a lot of CIOs for large organizations mm -hmm. for a breach. And what I've found is that a lot of times the executive teams, <clears throat> they're in, they're expected their IT person or CIO to right. be a mechanic and a security guard. And you can't yeah. do both of those things well, right? So the CIO is very strategic. He or she is planning a lot of strategic things within the organization, but the antivirus just is the only protection they have, or maybe a, a backup on site or off site. Sure. But backups get encrypted. Suddenly they they restore the data, they find out it wasn't protected. So they, they find out that they need people like us, unfortunately, the hard way. Um, and I work with a lot of companies that have a great IT department. We're not trying mm -hmm. to replace them, but we can provide value doing those cybersecurity things that they don't have time or the know-how to do. Okay. And are both PC and Mac environments just as vulnerable or is one better than the other? They are absolutely vulnerable. You know, there is a, a false... Um, rumor that's been going on for years that Macs right. don't get hacked, that they, you know, they, they don't right. even need antivirus. That is right. not true anymore because a lot of things are browser based or email based. Okay. And it doesn't matter what you're using, you can definitely be compromised. Okay. Wow. That's that's probably an eye opener for a lot of people that have a Mac environment. And, and in fact, that's why they went to a Mac environment, right? And at the end of the day, that's just not the case. They're not, they're not protected, right? That, that's right. I mean, Macs may have fewer problems in some ways from a, a operating system standpoint, but they're, they're not less or more secure. It's, it's about That's the right. same. That's right. That's right. So Chris Knowles, founder and CEO of Beyond Computer Solutions. For those of you listening to us, have this very important discussion today. Uh, check his website out. We'll, we'll show a link right here below uh, this conversation that we're having below this video and uh, to get some more information. But if you don't call Chris, call somebody because this is a very important item for your small business and, and medium-sized businesses as well. Start to get into big businesses, Chris, they typically have a whole floor, a whole division of people mm -hmm. that monitor this, right? But for the small to medium-sized companies, not so much. They need, they need a Chris Knowles in their, in their lineup, right? Totally. And it's very affordable for smaller businesses. You know, when sure. you think about just giving up one or 2% of your revenue to protect your reputation, your clients, your information, you know, it's priceless. It's like trying to walk around without a life insurance policy. That's right. You don't have a, part, a cybersecurity partner. That's um, right. There is some free advice I'd like to give, Jim, if that'd be okay. Sure. Um, I just want to give you all a tip. You know, one of the most important things you can do right now, immediately, is log into any of your banking accounts, your social security accounts, and your email, and turn on either two-factor or multi-factor authentication. Mm. It's a free thing to do. It's not really technical or complicated, but what it does is it requires you to not only know your password, but to be sent a text or a temporary recurring code that changes in order for you to log in. That wow. will keep other people from being able to get in because passwords are leaked all the time. Okay. And just by doing that, you will minimize a lot of problems um, by you know doing that. You need other layers, of course, including yeah. some training, which I'm offering for free to our listeners mm -hmm. today. But um, you need to turn that that feature on to protect yourself. That's that is a great tip. Uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs uh, take his advice on that and do it today. Don't put it off because I agree with you. I've I've had that tip given to me from others, and it is definitely a good one. So. Chris Knowles, thank you so much for joining us on the show. We very much appreciate it. I know a lot of our subscribers and viewers will get a lot out of your visit with us here today. So thank you. My pleasure, Jim. Be safe out there. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Jim Fitzpatrick. This has been a JBF Business Media production.